And that was the beginning of luxury hair. I started hair, I think, in my third year. So after I quit my job, it's a funny thing, I met a lady who was doing hair. She had, she was, she was doing hair but she didn't have clients. At that time my biggest, um, my biggest uh, challenge was that I didn't have enough capital to bring in hair. So we partnered with her, partnered like since she had the capacity to bring the hair and I had the clients, we were going to do the business together. So we did it for like a year and a half. And it really grew because it really grew when I partnered with her. But when she said that we wouldn't continue working together, I had to start again from scratch. But the advantage is I had the clients. The clients knew Angie. That is where Luxury Hair by Angie started. Because when we were in partnership, it was partnership in terms of logistics, but everybody knew this is Angie's hair. So I went back home. I was, I remember it was August, I think. I went back home. I had to start from scratch. So I sat down for like two weeks re-strategizing. I came up with a business plan. I, I went and officiated luxury hair. After registering, I used to do it from my car because I didn't have enough capital at that time to open a shop. Well, I did, but it didn't make sense to me because I was still operating online. And nowadays the client doesn't need to come to you, you can go to them. So at that time, I'd already bought my first car, so I used to literally operate from my boot. That was my office. So I had so many clients, queries. Some would come to where I was at home, others would go to, I would go to where they are, from their home to their office. And it was such a personalized um, touch to my business because that's when people, that's when I realized people value Angie. Up to date, there are clients who cannot buy hair if Angie is not there. So where are you? If I'm not in the country, when are you coming back? I need to deal with you because I, I believe they're able to, I don't know, understand me better or relate to me, I don't know. Even when it comes to pieces, somebody will be like, I want the, you, did you see the shoot Angie did? I want Angie's hair, that long straight one, that's what I want, you know? And that's why I was like, that, that is me. Like luxury hair is me. Nobody can take it away from me. It... Um, when I said I'm going, I'm, I'm going to be serious about my hair business, everybody was like, hair. Like even when I'd meet somebody and like, what do you do? I'm like, I sell hair. They're like, oh, okay. I work at Chase Bank, you know? They would always look down on me like, what is this? What is she talking about? And I was like, okay, that's what I do. My mom was my biggest supporter for my business, like in terms of mentally, financially. Well, my dad wasn't because he was like, you know, the thing with the generate, this different generations is what they see as success is a doctor, a lawyer, you know? But I, my dad wasn't seeing how he, I've taken her to a good school, she has a degree, then she's doing her master's, and then she's telling me she wants to, you know, do hair. Like it didn't make sense to him. So at the beginning, he wasn't for it. He was like, no, why don't you get a job? What is this hair? What do you know about it? You know, so the naysayers, mostly my friends, I noticed your friends wouldn't be your biggest supporters. In fact, I tell people, I don't want business with my friends. Not in a bad way, but they always feel like, the, your best supporters are strangers in life, I think in all aspects of life. 
So there are friends who supported me when I started because those were my first clients. But some would be like, give me it for half. Give me the hair for half, you know, half price. Give me it for free. And I'm like, come on, like, it's a business. Like, I have to make some profit, you know? So yeah, my parents supported me financially, without a doubt. Especially my dad started supporting me when he could see progress with the business, when he could see that I had become fully independent. I wasn't calling him for money, you know? He'd come to Nairobi, I've moved out. When I bought a car, he's like, how are you buying a car? How did this happen, you know? I used to tell him, Dad, I want to buy a car. He's like, oh, you want to buy a car? And the next thing he told me, that car is like, what? He says, my mom, what is this girl doing? What is this hair business, you know? So that's when he got so much interest in, the, in hair. Have I had moments of doubt? Yes, I have. Um, initially was when I, I hadn't traveled to Asia to meet any of my suppliers. So I was literally um, communicating with them on emails. And for me to send them such a lump sum amount of money, when, that was my biggest doubt. My other doubt was all my friends were getting these corporate jobs, you know, and I was like, okay, what if this hair thing doesn't work and I'm four years deep and I don't have working experience? Like, what is going to be my fallback plan? That's why I needed to finish my master's such that even if anything happens, I know I can at least, with a master's, at least I have a chance of getting a job. I had doubts if people would believe in my brand and buy from me. From then I had one, there's only one competitor who had a big store, you know, in this really good location. So I was like, why are people going to buy from me from my car, you know? And imagine they did, like, that was, that was when I was like, oh my God, God, you're really coming through for me. When I started my business, the market was so raw. It was so, there was need, a very serious need for hair. People starting to do hair now, I'm sorry, but it's not going to be as easy as then because at that time there was a need for hair. That is why people would follow you to the car because this was a new item that they've not seen. They've only been seeing fiber. So you're giving them Cambodian hair. The hardest part about starting out was capital because I was like, I need volume. I cannot afford it, so what am I going to do? So at that point, I accepted my situation as is, which was I didn't have much, but I can start with the little I had. So with the little I had, I started. You know, I did a swift to my supplier's account, brought the hair, and that's the thing with business. You can never have enough capital to start. Start with the little you have. Slowly, slowly, it's going to generate and the next thing you know, you're comfortably, you know, operating. If worse comes to worse, get a loan. Where do I source my hair from? Well, different Asian countries. Of course, I'm not going to tell you <laughs> where I'm getting my hair from. <laughs> but um, basically, you have to do your research in terms of where you're sourcing your hair from and it has to be ethical hair trade is a billion it's a multi-billion dollar business and where we have families who literally grow their hair for sale these countries have high poverty level so they use their hair as a form of income so you have suppliers who go and buy hair in tons People grow, and then from their diet, the diet in Asian countries is really good, so it fosters the growth. And they have thick, like you can find in Indian countries, the hair is a bit thinner, but longer. You can find in Vietnam, because Vietnam, of their diet, the hair is thicker and has more luster. So that is how you're able to differentiate each hair um, with regards to a client's needs. 
I'm not bragging, but like I always give a hundred percent to everything I'm doing, such that I don't want anything to catch me off guard. Like from the beginning of my business, I already had a POS system. I already had QuickBooks. Like I don't take chances with my business. By the time I was opening my first store, I could easily afford to open a store much earlier than I should have. But I was playing on the comfort zone such that in business, always minimize on your expenses. That's what has always worked for me. Uh, luxury hair as an organization, we're such a small team. As I said, business, cut your expenses as much as you can. Like when I started, I was the accountant, I was doing marketing, I was doing sales, I was doing everything, I was a sales girl. But now at least we've grown, we're a team of about six people. And I, it's, it's a family. I don't believe, like I'm not bossy to the people I work with. We, we're more of a family, like quarterly we go for trips, we go for dinner, we go for drinks, you know. When, when there's no business, like I'll sit with my staff and we'll joke. Like, I believe you should be a family in a business. It shouldn't be so formal, you know, such that, well, I have my moments. Like, if you're not doing your job, I'm gonna come at you because you're affecting my cash flow. But generally, luxury hair is just a, a, a family. Like, we love each other. Like on birthdays, they surprise me, I'll surprise them. Like it's, it's just, it feels like home. Even when you come to luxury here, it should feel like home. That's what matters. My marketing was word of mouth. Actually, your product is your biggest, invest in your product. It's your biggest source of marketing. Because if I have good hair, if you have good hair, when somebody sees you, they're going to ask you, where did you get that hair? And they'll tell you, Angie with the good hair. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I started from word of mouth. My friends would tell their friends, my auntie, my cousin. Then I went to social media. I will tell you for free, social media is the best avenue to market your product. Competition, I believe there's, what's the population of Kenya? We're about 40 million, right? If we're working with the middle class, maybe women who can afford my, can afford luxury hair, could be millions. Competition is good, competition is healthy. It takes me out of my comfort zone. But as I believe that women should work towards empowering each other. I work closely with my competitors. For luxury hair, I want to expand regionally, East Africa. I have a good market in Rwanda. I have a good market in Uganda and Tanzania. So in terms of growth, I'd like a branch in either of those. That's it.